May 28th, 2020, Thursday, just a brief summary of the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. Hi, this is Mike, Recovered Alcoholic, and the word alcoholic means I can't safely drink alcohol and a mind tells me it's okay to drink which is a recipe for death since the founding of Alcoholics Anonymous in 1935 and the published book Alcoholics Anonymous in 1939, alcoholics have been saved from alcoholic death, insanity, wet brain, through the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. The purpose is to enable you to find a power greater than yourself so you can stay sober not drink and be happy joyous and free In step one it says we admitted we were powerless over alcohol and our lives have become unmanageable so, in the 12 years of my drinking, I drank like an alcoholic would, meaning that once I put the alcohol in my body, I became thirsty, a physical craving took over where I just wanted more and more. But the effect of alcohol on me was profound. It enabled me to be myself. It lowered my inhibitions, made me feel good. I could enjoy my own company and artificially be happy, joyous, and free under the influence of alcohol. So I suffered from the step one for 12 years where I was powerless, didn't realize it was the first drink that triggered a physical craving for more and a mind that obsessed over it where everything, it meant everything to keep that going, to keep the drinking going. If I was mad, glad, or sad, it was my go-to as a way of feeling good and forgetting about my stress and problems and worries of life I guess the unmanageable part starts with the physical craving of course you can't stop it on your own willpower I can't say out loud or in my head stop and stop physically it doesn't happen you know the I'll just have a couple drinks and then a few hours later you're drunk the idea you know once you take a drink you're a different person so the person who made the decision to drink is not the same person after they take the drink and that's been my experience. 
I've been sober, dry, not had any alcohol since July 1st of 1984. And this being May 28th of 2020, that, that gives me over 35 years and 10 months, I think. So how in the world did I stay sober that long? And it was because of the 12 steps that showed me how to have a spiritual experience, spiritual awakening, something I experienced. The 12 years I was drinking, I didn't have a God of my understanding, a creator in my life that I responded to or acknowledged or was aware of. Basically, it was my best thinking. In other words, I was the God in my life. I was the creator. I was the higher power. Some say it's, they call it the ego or the false self. But I can remember thoughts coming in my head and it was like, it was the boss and now I realize that things that pop in your head are not necessarily in your best interest. For example, this morning I woke up and still my eyes are closed in the bed and I woke up this morning and I, the first thought was the fear of the current situation with this health crisis and the implications of what's going to happen or they're trying to implement what they call contact tracing to try to control a virus that is basically the common cold or a flu. Uh, it started in China and it's called the Wuhan flu and it quickly was changed to COVID-19 and anyway there's a big rabbit hole in that but it's been approximately two and a half months here in Terre Haute, Indiana that the effects of this health crisis where they have shelter in place, closed the stores down, non-essential stores, Walmart's open of course, that's essential, but not the local restaurant or the local bar that, you know, all the churches have been shut down. But the point is, this morning, my mind, I hear in my mind about the tracing, and I am concerned, worried, upset, fearful of the implications of the word tracing, content tracing I see on the TV where they have the power to know your medical history and they could trace everybody that you've been around and if you test positive they have the power to quarantine you in some kind of shithole hotel, you know basically own you and it's very very upsetting the, and again to get back to the point this morning I that's the first thing I think about it's like you know I'm not even conscious yet I'm half awake and, and this, I get hit with this so what is that what, what is that that what, that is pure torture you know and you think about it long enough and you're so terrified and puts you in a um, 
hell of a mind freeze or paralyze you with fear and all that and you know so I get hit with that you know and it's like is it going to eat your lunch or are you going to eat its lunch meaning who's really in charge here who's really the authority of your consciousness and so immediately I recognized that, that it was some kind of thought that just kind of sprang up you know first thing in the morning and I choose not to think about it rather than dwell on it with no options or you know it's like a animal trapped in a corner you know it, it's gonna really freak out and you know so anyway the point is that I wanted to say if I have a God of my understanding and I even take it you know to there's so much confusion with you know oh God or higher power you know even Jesus Christ you know and it there's a big emphasis on that and in the Bible and all that and it's like you know I'm gonna go to where there is no confusion you know exactly what I mean when I say creator and that's what I've been doing I've been in the past in the book Alcoholics Anonymous they talk about choosing your own concept of a higher power and there's many names for it and father of light spirit of the universe creative intelligence but nobody can say it's not vague when you say when I say creator I'm talking about the creator that created me you know this this body and this spirit and there is a spirit it's a something that's not physical it's the creator that created that that's who I'm talking to or praying to and there is no confusion you know it's the the creator is the I don't you know I you know describe it in words but created me it's just like it's that simple and I've had what you would call spiritual experiences and one time I was meditating I actually came out of my body and was hovering above the ceiling looking at my body on the couch for 10 seconds it's like what is that that's an awareness an immortal awareness without a body I mean that never dies now who created that that's who I'm calling my higher power and so there's no confusion so it's obvious that this world was designed the body if you look at your own body I mean you think this is an accident that this came together this is beyond anyone's understanding meaning I can't make a tree grow I can't design it I chemically electrically this body is beyond anything human being can actually make you know the trend is now that they want to morph machine and flesh and cyborgs and robots and blah 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 and you know and be God and that's what I was when I was running the show and calling the shots and so what for the definition of unmanageable or alcoholic or drunk or sober you know I drank for 12 years I haven't had a drink in over 35 and and step one it says we're powerless meaning I have no power over 
alcohol, when I physically drink it. I have no power over the mental obsession and the definition of an obsession would be the same thought over and over and over again and again and again. That's the only thought you have and it dominates everything, supersedes everything, overrides everything and that's all you think about. You obsess and you just stay on it and I certainly had that when I was drinking. I have no desire to drink alcohol. I have no desire. I haven't been thinking about it. And the desire is to think about it. And I have no desire to drink alcohol. The physical part though is really is the first drink because once it's in your body once it's in my body I'm a different person I'm a different I'm a different thinking different physical craving or the craving for more alcohol kicks in and I want the effect the feeling of release and it's straight up a delusion it's distorting my perception I think everything is a certain way and it's not it's false so in step one I admit that I'm an alcoholic and my life is unmanageable and I concede to my innermost self that yes I have a body that cannot tolerate alcohol I cannot safely drink it and a mind that tells me to drink and alcoholism has been around since they've crushed grapes to ferment to make into alcohol in other words it's been around since thousands of years and so in step one, it really boils down to understanding the word alcoholic and it's a physical craving. Your body has a certain allergic reaction to alcohol and you crave more and you can never satisfy it. And your mind has an obsession over it. And in the book Alcoholics Anonymous, they talk about the insidious insanity of picking up the first drink. And I was listening to a tape recently, and they talked about, you know, the mental obsession wasn't present, and the person picked up the first drink. You know, the example they used in the big book was this guy was trying to get sober and wasn't really convinced he was an alcoholic and this is back in when AA first started and we went on some business trip to Washington DC and he had been through the ringer with drinking and how it kind of destroyed his life and so he said, oh, I got it. Thanks for the information. You know, I'm not an alcoholic. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I understand. I'm not too far gone. I got my house, my wife, and job, and, you know, everything's fine. And I'll just stay away from alcohol. Everything will be good. And, you know, I'm off my, you know, off on continuing my life. And the book talks about how he was in Washington on a business trip and, out of the blue, his mind hits him with, want well, be nice to have a martini or a drink, and he drinks it without any mental defense at all. I mean, nothing said to him, oh, that's not a good idea, or don't do it, or he drinks it like it was, you know, all the experiences he had with the alcohol where it had been 
terrible consequences of all the drinking and they outlay that they uh, talk about that history in the book and describing Jim and, and the point is he drinks it he drinks you know and has a drink and again once he puts it in his body it's a whole new ball game and he gets drunk of course and it just was to illustrate that there was no mental obsession he wasn't thinking about it he just got hit out out of the blue you know would be a good idea to have a drink you know and he and he says yeah that, yeah yeah and he had a drink and it's like there was no mental defense and it, apparently he didn't have a god of his understanding or higher power or creator in his life because he picked up and it illustrates the insidious insanity of the first drink and the con the not consequences but the criteria surrounding that or the conditions surrounding that where he picked up without any any thought of no oh, this is not a good idea or you know nothing it was there was no nothing to holding back and after experiencing prior run-ins with alcohol and having devastating effects on them that memory didn't stop him. They said, oh, you know, I, I remember, you know, it was really bad, and, you know, so I'm not going to do that. You know, a normal person would have that, you know, and in and this, and this story with Jim, it wasn't present. So there's a book quote in the, in the book Alcoholics Anonymous. They, they nicknamed it the big book, and it says there will come a time where you will not have a mental defense against the first drink and at that time only a god of your understanding or power higher power of your understanding will prevent you from picking up the drink and I believe that with all my heart so just a quick example I was five years dry and I was going through a divorce in 89 and uh, I was just driving in Kenmore or suburb of Akron and all of a sudden in the middle of the day I pull into some bar walk in and there was a bunch of seats bench seats and it was the bartender and this other guy at the end of the bar and they were apparently drinking together and I sit down at the far end and, and sit there for five ten minutes and he never came around but I think if he if it was typically an, a, a normal situation where he would have come up to me, I think he was waiting for me to come to the bar, and that's why he didn't come up to me and offer me a drink. But I believe with all my heart, if he had come up to me and offered me a drink, I, I would have ordered a drink. And I was at that moment completely out of my head. You know, I've been to meetings and, you know, all the history of drinking and coming day A and all that, you know, I had been dry five years and I had, I was like in a different place, you know, and it was like, who's really, <laughs> who's in charge at that moment? I, that, that was a classic example of no mental defense. I was completely out to lunch, meaning mentally I was not present. Um, that story ended with me leaving and uh, that's how close I came to picking up but I really too believe if he had offered me a drink or said hey, what, do you want, what are you drinking I probably would have ordered so it's true I, have, I actually experienced it and, and again I think what saved me is my higher power brought me that close and I didn't pick up and he didn't come over so the God of my understanding you know the grace of God the grace of the Creator the love of God or love of the Creator was present in my life because I didn't pick up and but uh, in step one is to 
say, hey, I can't drink anymore. I'm going to own the fact that it's not safe for me to drink because I have terrible consequences. And in the book, Alcoholics Anonymous, it says that's the great obsession that we want to be normal drinkers. And I never controlled my drinking, ever. I drank as much as I wanted. I enjoyed it. I love drinking and all that, and but there's a lot of consequences, a lot of damage, collateral damage, damage to me and everything around me. So step one is to say yes, I concede to my innermost self, and the distinction there is your soul that awareness that popped out of my body and looking at my body what is that that's that's my spirit that's my soul that's the awareness that's immortal that'll never die and I'm I'm, I'm in a body that cannot tolerate alcohol you know and it back in the 80s uh, Ronald Reagan's wife said, you know, they, she was big on drugs, and she said, well, just say no. And for me, I just can't say no and not pick up the first drink because I go, always go back to it. And the, this is really good. It's I can stop 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times, 10,000 times. 10 million times I could stop, 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 stop. The trick is, is to never start again. It's not about the stopping, it's about the starting. <laughs> it so really is, it's about the starting, you know, picking up the first drink. And that's, that's key in recovery is, you know, not to pick up the first drink. How do you do that when your mind tells you drink? So in step one, your life is certainly unmanageable. My, my life was unmanageable, meaning I couldn't manage it. So in step two, it says, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. And it's about a belief and a power greater than yourself. And it's about being restored to sanity. And in this context, would mean the sanity would be not to pick up the first drink. The insanity would be to pick up the first drink. And to be restored to sanity means you're in a state of neutrality. The problem doesn't exist. You don't pick up the first drink. And so in step two, it says, came to believe that power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. It's the jumping off place of, are you the power? Are you calling the shots? Or is there a creator in your life who created you? It's obvious you didn't create yourself. So do you believe in a power greater than yourself? A higher power? A spiritual dimension? Because it certainly can't be a physical one. Everything that you see that changes, dies, decays. Look at trees, rebirth and spring fall, leaves, decay, physically, it can't be physical, and if you're having trouble accepting a power grain yourself, isn't it obvious that something or created you? Isn't that obvious? I mean, it's obvious that the body didn't happen by accident. I like the example of saying 
a tornado went through a junkyard and magically at the other end of the junkyard a Boeing 747 appeared by a tornado going through a junkyard it all came together well that's that's ridiculous that's that would never happen so there is a creative design that's pretty obvious there is a creator I believe that's pretty obvious for me it is do you believe in something like that do you believe in a higher power and they have what they call prayer and it's basically talking to that higher power and like I'm talking today you know it's just conversation and if you have a creator in your life wouldn't it be a good idea to talk to the person that created you wouldn't they have a bigger bigger picture of what is going on <laughs> yeah and you would only do that if you're hitting a bottom where you're calling shots and your best thinking crashes and burns and you get to a point where you're too sick and tired of being sick and tired you know and it's obvious that you have a ego collapse you know a depth you know it's it takes a lot to do that but it happened to me